Let me try that again then. We'll do that next time. <laughs> I messed it all up. Fancy intro when you don't go live. Ready? That didn't work, man. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> You know, the, the only way you get good is by doing it wrong enough times that you learn how to do it the right way. I look real bad with that one, didn't, well, didn't we? We look right. bad with that one. You know what, though, man? I found the most successful people don't give a crap about looking bad. What about you? I don't. I wear the same ball cap, the same blue jeans, the same T-shirts. You know, With 100 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. Hundred grand in a line of credit that has nothing to do with what I can do as a business. Mm-hmm. That's just a, a new a new uh, tool that I can use as a hundred grand. That's crazy, man. I, I, I love with, I love hanging out with people that don't value portraying wealth or su- making it appear that they're successful. Do you get that air from people too? I do. I can't stand to me. I can't stand a person, any person that portrays wealth when it's apparent that the wealth isn't there because if you need to portray it <clears throat> something's wrong either with the psyche or you know just how like i've never met a rich guy that brags about his wealth i've never for what right <laughs> what? now let me ask you a personal question chris as everybody we got 30 people on uh, how did i come off you know, just if you could be transparent, how did I just my personality, my spirit, my business acumen? So when I when I first first contacted you, I, I you know I've said it numerous times that we've you know done interviews and had chat sessions and whatnot. That I, I didn't find you, I didn't find your channel, your YouTube channel, or your real estate business by what I was looking for. I found it in in searching for something else that I was looking for, which was guidance on how to. Uh, make my retirement a self-directed IRA. That's right. right. Exactly. But when I got started going through your content, you and I started talking more. Um, you know, even now we're in a you know a real estate investment deal together. Yeah. I said to a friend of mine who's actually she's she's actually a real estate agent. I said you should check out some of his content, and I meant no offense by it. I said Chris sometimes can be a little quirky, and I didn't mean it in a bad way. So she went and watched some of your content and she asked me the next day, she said, why would you think he's quirky? I said, because he doesn't have, he doesn't have a skin in front of him. He's not trying to portray something that he's not. And she said, yeah, because I thought all his content was authentic. I said, you know what? I used the wrong term. It was authentic because if you're interviewing someone and they say something that maybe is not true, or maybe something you personally have not experienced, you're going to hold them to it. You're going to ask them, well, wait a minute. You can't do a transaction like that because this reason, that reason, whatever, from, you know, from your experience. It's just, you know, holding holding someone accountable is not a bad thing. You're, you're saying maybe you said it the wrong way or maybe I didn't interpret what you were trying to tell me. Can you further explain what that was? I remember you pulled my card on mm-hmm. one of my rental properties. Yep. You're like, dude, why is it not in a trust? I'm like, you know what? I yep. got that one. I think all of us have that one of, you know, it, just being an entrepreneur, you got those loose ends that you don't tie up. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, like I wasn't trying to, di- you. I mean, obviously you and I did this privately when I asked you about it. And yep. you, said, you know what, dude, that was one property that I bought early on. And as I have experienced my personal investing self, once you put it in your name, there's no reason essentially to get it back out of your name. No. And it's, it's not a priority. Yes, of course, we know we should do that. But it's it's just not a priority. We didn't know how to do the transaction correctly when we first did it. The, the property's cash flowing or whatever it's doing. Yeah, I'll get around to it. And we never do. You know, we never do. Round up. Thank you for joining us. This is Chris Haskins. And my mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. And doing that, I get to introduce you to the people that I hang around, hang out with. I talk to Chris probably, if not every day, every other day. Yeah. To talk about business. We're doing a deal together now. A six-figure deal. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Just another deal. Yeah. A couple of things coming up, too, that we will be doing. So, But 
over the last few months, Chris uh, had this line of credit, and I wanted him to share with you how he was able to actually put this thing together and get $100,000 business lines of credit that he could do anything with. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Birch, what up? What's up, man? How are you? Man, I'm a little hot. It's like 82 degrees today. You know what? It's, so I'm in D.C. It's been raining all day, but it's in the mid to low 70s. Like my window, my windows are open, but it's pouring down rain and it's November, what, 11th. That's crazy. Yeah. Normally we'd be hunkered down with the heat blaring. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, Chris, before we get into how you get this lines of credit and roundup, if you're just dying it to chomp it a bit to find out how you can qualify. Also, you know, I've negotiated some goodies for you. I did. There is a link in the video description. You can if you don't want to hear us talk, you can go right to it. That link is in the video description to go ahead and apply. But I, I, I want to share with you Chris's story. The man, <clears throat> full-time entrepreneur, been doing business for quite a while, does real estate flips in several, uh, matter of fact, you're in several different cities, right, Chris? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Several cities, and we're actually do, looking to go come up to Baltimore with him. Give us some of your background, Chris, so the Roundup family knows exactly who you are. Yeah, sure. So I am the typical small business owner, entrepreneur. Um not long after I attempted to go to college and not soon after that got into the entertainment industry and not soon after getting into the entertainment industry, almost went broke myself in my early twenties. Uh, I was the, uh, you have different terms that you use, but I was the late night promoter at the local copy shop printing or getting copies made to go to the next event, the next concert to promote my events. And unfortunately, <clears throat> that business is tricky you know and and you're you're begging them in a sense i don't want to say begging but you are you're you're saying that my event's better so on this date don't go to that event come to my event and it just got you know to me it got a little bit worrisome i was out late at night i was waking up at lunchtime the following day because i was too tired you know i'm out in four or five o'clock in the morning coming home getting up at noon and i just got tired of doing it so in that process i had learned to design my own materials, my own, um, whether it be flyers or posters, whatever promotional items we were using for the events. Mm -hmm. And I started doing it for my competitors in a sense. And it actually transformed into its own business where I had my competition now asking me to design and potentially get their stuff printed. Wow. So I'm at home, you know, in the afternoon designing their work. I'm out late at night, promoting our event or whatever it was we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the next day I'm running down to my local printer that I built a relationship with picking up the order that I put in the night before and delivering it that next day to, you know, my competition in a sense. Yes. And that's, well, this is crazy. If they're already using me, I don't have to be out all night. I could just start kind of steamrolling that into a business. That was 2004. And here we are, you know, 16 years later, it is now a full offset digital signage print company. Nice. That's cool. So the, uh, your designs, is that going to be a Photoshop type of a you just going in and creating it out of thin yeah. air? Yep. Most For most of the, for, for the last probably 10 or the first 10 years of business, we did a lot of in-house design. But now <clears throat> in the last four to five years, everyone has their own way of putting their materials together. So I would say close to 90% of our print work now comes in pre-designed. Okay. So all we're doing is setting it up on our template or whatever device or, or machine we're going to use, print it, and you know the order is done. Nice. I will give you a shameless plug for you too so you don't have to. Chris also will do your bandit signs. Yep. A link for that, Chris? Yeah, uh, printequity.com. Printequity.com. I'll put that up there in the link description yep. too. Chris who does it. He's done my bandit signs. You good on that? I know you're um, doing a lot of po political stuff. You back yeah, to so, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what was it now? A week ago to the day, yeah. political, political has now disappeared. Gotcha. Uh, the election was a week ago. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're open, running at full force, ready for orders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So round up, if you want some signs, Chris is your man. He's got a special note. Uh, we, uh, we, Chris and I went back and forth from putting the little package together yep. and equity.com. I'll put that up too. Yep. Cool. So yeah, this lines of line of credit. I can't tell you, Chris, how many times I've heard if I only had the money, if I only, I got this and set up, I got this set up. All we need 
is the money. And I'm presuming you being a on an entrepreneur, you've heard that too. Of course. I mean, I've actually early on, I thought those ways. I was not bankable. I hadn't built the business credit. I I learned early on, not in, in this business now, but early on in my 20s. You know, I mean, we all went to college, right? And you would go, I went to Old Dominion actually, and you would go to the web center at lunchtime. And there were all these little tables set up with all these credit card companies. I remember that. And you can get like a free water bottle and a Frisbee and all this other stuff just fill out this little form. But what you didn't know, which I didn't know because no one told me that, I filled out an application for a credit card. Right. So a month later, this card shows up and says, boom, you got a thousand dollars available on this card. Well, mm -hmm. what does somebody in their early 20s do? They're like, Psh free money, yeah. I'm gonna use it, and you start swiping it, and then the bill comes, and you're like, oh, $25 minimum payment. I can make that payment, no problem. <laughs> but as you learn or you look at it over the years, you're like, $25 minimum payment, based on the next 30 years that mm -hmm. you make that payment, you will then make that $1,000 debt whole again. So it's it's the racket of the, 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 the credit card companies per se. But so I learned early on and I canceled most of that stuff once I yeah. cleared the balance. And, mm -hmm. you know, in business, even now, dude, I've been in, I've been a, a corporation for <clears throat> almost 17 years. And I'm still not bankable to the point that I thought I could be, meaning I can't go to my local branch, whatever lender it might be, and I can't necessarily get the type of funding that I thought I should be qualified for by being in business and having that history. Mm -hmm. I can get some money. The, the, the interest rates at a traditional bank are low. We get that. Yeah. The criteria is ridiculous. Gotcha. You being, know, being, they, an entrepreneur. They, being, being in business. Yeah. They want to see three years tax returns. If you're halfway through the year, they want to see a profit and loss statement yeah. from yeah. this year. And if that doesn't add up, you know, business fluctuates. I mean, there's not one single year in almost 17 years that my numbers have been the same. Mm -hmm. Political years, of course, as you mentioned, they're better because there's an influx of work that we don't normally get. Yeah. So every two years, the books kind of do their own little wave. <clears throat> you know, but what you were getting to is how did this little small business guy get $100,000 in line of credit and in, in business, correct? Yeah, let's get to it. So Roundup, if you got any questions for Chris, we're going to go. The company that he's using is we've uh, we've negotiated a discount with my people. Yeah. We turned Chris on to him, and um, the, now Chris is using them. And I just think it's an amazing story, especially for people that need money to get into the real estate. I promise you guys, real estate is on fire. I'm like, don't take it from me. Chris, is living, we're living it right now. Yep, yep. I mean, you're getting what? 10 to 10 to 20 percent offers above what you thought you were going to list the house for you don't even have to list it and you get a contract i mean the, yeah. it's ridiculous it's really unbelievable y'all the last time i saw anything remotely close to this was 2005 back when i got any game so mm -hmm. so how did this thing all come about chris so you got a hundred thousand you can do whatever you want to it tell us and i want my people to know listen guys don't be scared man at least apply see what you qualify for you know Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's real simple, Chris. You're going to put what you're going to put a link down in the description of this video for them. Yep, just go right to the link in the, the link is in the video right. description, y'all. <clears throat> so basically, all you're going to end up doing is what I did. You're going to fill out a basic application. Um, that application is going to include basic business information. They are going to ask you for your personal, um, your social security number as well as even if you don't have your EIN number, your federal tax ID number, if you don't have it, it's not a required field. You don't have to. Do that. Um, I will mention that uh, one criteria, you know, as you and I said, Chris, we don't sugarcoat it. There, there is a small fee involved, but you actually don't, you can either choose to pay the fee or not pay the fee. I chose to pay the fee. And the reason being is, the fee would then be deducted from the amount of lines of credit that I would be approved for in the first round. Nice. And I figured it doesn't really matter because even 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 if I didn't pay the fee or if I did or didn't pay the fee, <coughs> it doesn't make any difference. It's going to be the same qualification. I'm going to be approved for the same dollar amount either way. Gotcha. And my thinking was 
So now a lot of people will misinterpret, and I want to clarify uh, if you want to touch on this. This is not a trade line. So a lot of companies offer trade lines. And what a trade line is, is they have authority. They, they're qualified to report to the business credit bureaus that you've had a certain amount of credit over a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. but that's not money. That's not spendable cash. That's not spendable credit. It's building your business credit score. It's building whether you're bankable or not, but it's not, it's not tangible. You know, it's not, it's not monetized. Yeah. It makes you look better to qualify for money at some point. Isn't that with one vendor too, generally speaking? You, generally speaking, that's not <clears throat> one vendor that assigns a, um, a um, trade line to your business credit. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So you would have to have multiples, multiple trade lines to build your business credit yep. versus this, which is actually, in a sense, I would say cash on hand. This is mm -hmm. tangible. As soon as you're approved, as soon as you get the, the line of credit approved, you're good to go. I'm glad you mentioned that there was a fee. I'm like this, man. I don't want to try to trick anybody or make people think that it's free money out there because it's not. Yeah. There, You know, it's weird, man. The cost of money, the cost of money, you know, as you mature being an entrepreneur, that is just a part of business. Well, let me ask you, Chris, if I were to ask you, Chris, is, is that just a part of business? Is like the cost of potatoes or the cost of ink in your business, the cost of paper, yeah. the cost of nails? Is that yeah. just a part of just an expense? It is. It is. And even now, I mean, this video will go on for years, but we're in the middle of a global pandemic. All of my operating cost, not 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 just not my physical rent or physical bills, all of my material costs have gone up. Everything yeah, and stuff, everything's gone. Everything up. has gone up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because we're not moving like we normally move. Imports are not coming in the way they normally come in. So we're we're not doing the same things. So volume yeah. might increase for us because we're now figuring out new ways to keep our business sustainable, but that doesn't mean the supply chain can handle what we're trying to order. So, you know, it kind of throws everything out of whack. I'm telling you, two by fours were here, they were $2.70. Mm -hmm. Now they're six twenty. Yeah. So everybody's feeling that. Yeah. But there is a small cost, but round up, what I want you to know is that uh, because we do so much volume with Fund and Grow, the company's called Fund and Grow, if you go to their website and you go do it, you're going to pay $500 <coughs> more. So they gave us a discount to offer to my real estate roundup fam. So it's $500 off, but you have to use the link in the video description yep. just to find out what you got. So Chris, did you get that discount too? I sure did. Yep. So tell me about the process. You went there. Yep. So I went there, did the application and they actually, I'm assuming they still do this, but you know, we're talking a few months ago when I initially got, a, got approved. Mm -hmm. You don't actually have to pay the full fee today. Even if you choose to let them deduct it from your line of credit, you can actually set a three month payment term. Right. Yeah. So I chose that option. I got Chris Haskins discount. So it's 500 bucks off. And I chose to make three installment payments over the next 90 days. Gotcha. gotcha. And it was real simple. You know, I was like, you know what? It's not that I didn't trust it, but kind of if you're in business or real estate or you know, whatever, you have a develop like a thick skin and you're like, let me just see, mm -hmm. you know, I know Chris, there's no reason why Chris Haskins would tell me wrong. He vetted this company. Sure. But if they're going to allow me to stretch out the payments at no, no increase to me, why not? You know, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. So, where did you say that? Cause I have negotiated with them for probably three months before I even brought them on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're all benefiting from that. Um, so it's a simple application. It took a matter of days before I was contacted by someone at Fund and Grow. And uh, it was basically a, a basic inquiry to say, you know, what are you trying to do? They, they obviously they saw stuff and they didn't ask me for any tax returns or. Wow. Nice. Right. So there was no there was Profit no loss. Huh? Profit and loss. No profit and loss, no balance sheet, no tax returns. So this is a true business only line of credit, but it's based on your personal credit score. But explain that, Chris. Okay. What does that does that mean? Does 
how does that look? Is it not on your score? Is it is, is it on it, your report? It, it will never be reported on your personal credit. So the 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 Fund and Grow has a system that I don't know, and that's obviously why we're using them because I don't know what they know, but apparently they know what they're doing. So they basically ran a, a, a simple credit check on me myself. The FICO score was where it needed to be. Even if it, even if it's not, they'll give you options. So I believe they're, they're, at the time their current requirement was at least a 720 personal FICO or at least above 700, let me say. Gotcha. Now, they will get approvals at a little bit lower than that, but that's not an ideal scenario. And I'll tell you why. Because north of 700, Fund and Grow will do a first round of funding, meaning they will apply to the credit card lines of credit they know are looking for this small business criteria, right? Mm. Know who it is. So their plan is within the first 30 days of the first approval to go back to these lenders based on that information you gave them and get the second round approved within like the first couple of weeks of your initial approval. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. American Express uh, business blue card, not the personal card. This is a business only American Express line of credit and it comes on a you know plastic card. They approved it for 18,000 mm -hmm. first round. <clears throat> they, as soon as I got the approval in the mail, I contacted Fund and Grow as they instructed me. They said, don't use it yet. We're going to apply for a second round. Wow. With day, 18,000 line of credit turned into 50,000. Good Lord. They, These dudes know. Man, you know, it's weird. I'm thinking where to go and who to go to. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And like, I, so people have asked me about this, Chris, for the last few months. Like, how did you get it? And I can honestly say, I don't know. Yeah. I'm man. running my business, I'm allocating the money to make my business more profitable and continue my business. I don't know what these guys know, but I don't care. Like they, they know how to do it. You know, I was thinking about doing it myself. I'm just imagining how many people I would have to get on the phone, Chris, just to vet them. Who are they? What do they know? What is their yep. position? Yep. And it's like, they got those straight relationships with those people. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I got a question. Cause then I don't think it's going to be too many. Uh, okay. low, Laureano Perez wants to know how and what are the going interest rates on a business uh, credit line like this, Chris? So I'm glad you asked because I actually wrote them down for you. Oh, that's cool. Yep. So for American Express, it's 0%, 0% for the first 12 to 18 months. Nice. Okay. Wow. 0%. We just do have to pay the uh, uh, set up set principal amount, right? So they well, yeah, well, actually, it's the set long term principal interest amount, whatever that is, the minimum payment. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it in front of me. My minimum payment um, last month was like a, like one hundred and twenty five bucks or something. Got it. Right. Um, the That's another crazy, line of credit I got was for with Chase with Chase Bank. Chase Bank is 0% for the first 12 cycles, the first 12 months. Nice. Uh, Bank of America is 0% for the first nine cycles. And another bank I've never heard of, Fulton Bank, is 0% for the first 18 months. They got one of those down here. I've seen okay. before. Yeah, they're based in, I don't know, North Dakota or South Dakota. I know that's yeah, where I what the statement came from. Okay. Yeah. Do do they come in credit cards, Chris? Or how do they come? <clears throat> do do Tell me how you get. How, how does it show up? I can show you. Let me. I want to reintroduce you, Chris. This we've been on yep. here twenty five minutes. Roundup. We're talking about. We're talking with Chris Birch, full time entrepreneur. Just got a uh, recently got a business credit line for over a hundred thousand dollars through Fund and Grow. They are a finance a finance company, and they they have granted us a discount. With, on their services. So that link is in the video description. So head on over there if you want to see how much you qualify for, perhaps see if you qualify for another hundred. Yep. And I got to pay some bills too. If you need property data, skip tracing information, um, mortgage information, owner information, liens, pre foreclosures, all that stuff, the link for it, go to Chris Property Data. Prop Stream is giving us a discount for that as, that as well. Cool. Chris Birch. Yep. So as you said, it is a card. 
It's a regular it. line of credit. You see Bank of America, Chase. You know, nice. I mean, there's nothing. It's nothing special. It's like you know Fulton Bank, and these are these are lines of credit that you would use like any other bank card, any other ATM card. Mm -hmm. You then charge it. You get a statement in the mail. It shows you zero percent interest for twelve to eighteen months. As long as you make those monthly payments. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I guess the question that <clears throat> that person had: every bank is different, right? I don't know. So I I know Bank of Excuse me, American Express typically has a fairly high interest rate once you get out of the zero percent. But I'm gonna give you one key factor here. There's no reason why, right? So let's say let's say Bank of America only had a six month zero percent. You could take your Fulton line of credit, maybe maxed maxed out your Bank of America at zero percent. You could take the Fulton line of credit, do a balance transfer over to Fulton. That's not six months; it's twelve months zero percent, mm. right? So and and I will say also with Fund and Grow. They constantly email at least once a month. They have credit monitoring services that they offer, meaning they'll help you. They'll guide you through how to write the letters to the credit bureaus to get the inquiries on the initial lines of credit, get those removed. Nice. Um, they have a, a monthly newsletter that they email, email out with different strategies or you know options that you can have, whether it's a course or, you know, I'm sure with with. COVID now, they're doing a lot of video stuff, training. And so now I'm nine months into these lines of credit. So I'm getting close to the first the first end of the 12 month 0%. And I got an email earlier this week saying, we'd love to schedule a conference with you and strategize on where do you want to go forward? And let's look at what you've done. Let's look at your balances and let's see what we already know in you know based on the criteria that you're presenting us let's let's see what's the next path and i i, wow. I truly believe they know which way to point wow. you yeah that is cool yeah it's amazing i've seen them grow right they were in one building when i first met them then they go into another building now they're in the third building just yep. in the last few years and they've gotten i think over like 2.5 million for my roundup family yeah uh investors get your lines of credit up Links in the video description. Go ahead and head on over there to see what you qualify for. It cannot hurt just to fill it out and see what you get. Yeah. If you definance it. Chris, yeah. um, break it down for me. Being an entrepreneur, when you get access to large amounts of capital like that, who is this not for, in your opinion? Someone who's not going to use the money to make money with. Use the money to make money. Right. Someone who's going to use this line of credit to pay off a bunch of debt. Because the problem is you don't have the income to pay the debt with now. Why would you have it in 12 months after you've extended this line of credit? You know, you're going to now be paying interest on top of that debt, you know, mm -hmm. buying something that's frivolous, you know, that that you don't really need. You know, I, I, I'll admit one of the first charges I put on my American Express line of credit was a piece of print equipment for my normal day to day business. That gotcha. makes me money every single day. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to take the 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 profit from those orders on this machine to pay down that line of credit. I know it's zero percent, but if it's zero percent for 12 more months and I can pay it down in three, I still have nine more months to do something else with it. Nice. Nice. So, so it sounds like you need to use this. I just remember for myself, my first I had a home equity line of credit back in like oh mm -hmm. five or whatever. Yeah. And I just spent it on just cons I can't even remember, Chris, consumable goods. I just I had to just mm -hmm. put it in that category. Yeah. Uh you recommending that possibly we should get if they're gonna if they need to use it for that, then they may not want to get this type of financing. From my experiences as a business owner, entrepreneur, I wouldn't recommend you doing that. Mm -hmm. You're gonna further indebt yourself at a astronomical rate when that term com comes due. When that mm. interest starts incurring, it's it's just not going to be worth it. It's going to push you put you in a worse position if you don't know how to manage it. But what I what I'll say is, I've only used about thirty of my hundred because mm -hmm. I already know how to manage it. 
right? And now that I see that Fund and Grow is willing to help me now go through the third round of funding to say, boom, you've kept your lines at about 20 to 25 percent, which is what a lot of credit bureaus are looking for. Now is the time to ask for more money, it meaning yeah. allowing me to spend more. So it's going to continue to expand the range of where I could spend that money. So are you possibly going to have are your credit lines getting increased, Chris? Is that where they're that's, going with this? That exactly. That exactly is exactly the plan. So my first round, you and I did a video I don't know, a couple months ago. My first round was like 60,000 or 70,000. And it's now over 100 within six months. Yeah, that's crazy, man. All right. So we're, we're going into the third round. Everything is current. No late payments. I'm paying everything on time. And they're saying, Chris, you know what? It's about that time. We need to we need to increase your limits because you're now showing them that you know how to manage that money. Mm, that's funny how that works. Yeah. It's funny how that works. Hey, I got a question came in. Patricia Rose, she says she's doing fix doing fix and hold for section eight. Okay, section eight, good for you. Yeah. Would these lines of credit be good for that process, Chris? You think? From so from my experience, it might be good on the rehab, mm -hmm. right? But if you're holding the property, you're gonna whatever term you're gonna hold it for, those lines are gonna start to incur interest. So you're gonna have to refinance out of that somehow. Because you're not gonna want to hold an American Express card after 18 months that's probably incurring probably close to 20% interest. I mean, American Express interest rates are ridiculous. Yeah, mine's 14.9. I don't know what yours yeah, is. I, I don't know. Yeah, mine's around 16 when, when it comes due next year. But yeah. yeah, for that strategy, it might be good for the fix and flip. Then refi it out. And refi it out. Well, not fix and flip. She said hold. Fix and hold, yeah. So I would fix it and try to refi out of it Maybe could, you probably could re refi out of it pretty good if you already have a contract for Section 8 because you're showing a long-term renter. Right? Income. That's right, yep. Patricia. I would consider that too. Yep. You can use it to buy houses too, Chris. Now, have you, uh, uh, when I met with the COO, mm -hmm. Mike, he's saying there's a way you can pull that money off. And some title companies would even take it. I've bought a house with a credit card and you can get those checks. Do Are you using them to pull money off? No, they, they, they do have an amount that you can just literally pull cash off the card. It's not the full it's not the full balance of the line of credit that you have. It's a percentage of that line. Gotcha. But yes. But yes, you can do that. So like um, I actually saw one of your interviews with one of the C COOs at Funding yeah. Pro where he mm -hmm. said we actually the the buyer had funding in place, but it wasn't going to be in place before closing. So they were able to do a cash advance from their line of credit to settle on the property, right? Mm. Their earnest money right. or, or whatever it was. I can't remember exactly, but they used it to, to hold the contract. Like a bridge loan almost. Yes, it was like a bridge. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's sharp too, man. Are you talking about just access? You know what, man? As I get older, I'm like, I don't care if I have a dime. Yep. As long as I have access to go borrow it at any time. Yeah. You know, I think, is that like a... Is that a, this a business mindset, Chris? I don't know, man, because it's irrelevant to me. I'm like, I know where to go get it. Yeah, I would, it's a muscle, I think, to me. It's a muscle to know. You know, I, 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 totally off subject, but I, I'll bring it up real quick. I got a call from my local bank. My, I, I know the loan officer. He calls me the other day. We're in COVID-19, you know, probably going into COVID-2021 at the rate we're going. He calls mm -hmm. me and says, do you have any business associates that are looking for loans right now because the branch is really looking to help out the small business community. Do you have clients that are looking for funds? And all I could think about is all the paperwork and BS that he put me through. And he's a nice person. Fund and grow. I've never met these guys. These guys yeah. took my basic criteria based on a credit score and got me a hundred grand in less than six months. Chris, hold tight. It looks like YouTube has gone down. Really? This will be a first. Hmm. Round up, hold patient with me. This would be the first for me. I've never had YouTube go down. Somebody just commented and said it was down. Hold I'm trying on, on my phone. 
I've got four kids in my house. I wouldn't doubt if they hit something. Hold tight with us, Roundup. We'll see what's going down. Is it not loading for you either, Chris? Not on my phone. It is not. The video is down. Experience interruptions. Find out why. This is so crazy. But it appears... Somebody said it was down. Got questions starting to come in, too. Okay. Let me see if... uh... Facebook's up. Was Facebook still going on? Yeah, I'm seeing people saying I'm now watching through YouTube. Everything's live on my end. Hmm, can y'all check everything's live on your end? Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with that, y'all. All right, so it looks like we're good. So, yeah, you would, you would, uh, you were shoot, so much on my mind. Right, you were talking about. Talking to the COO, yes. using the money, bridge loan, quickly yep. closing on it, getting yep. back. That's a strategy in and of itself. Access to the money. You're saying it's a muscle for it me. Is. is that something that, go ahead. I'm sorry. It is. It is. So, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you go to your local lending institution, whatever whatever financial bank that you bank with, and you say, you know, I'm, you know, Joe, Joe businessman. I've been in business for a year or 10 years or five years. I'm and, picturing you going into the thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, so you go in, you fill out this loan application. Then they come back and they ask you for two to three years tax returns, profit and loss statements throughout the year, balance sheet. Uh, sometimes they'll ask for a personal guarantee. Um, sometimes. Well, most of the time. Yes. Yeah, sure. Most of the time. I've been. I've experienced a few early on. With without a personal, you're lucky on that. But I will tell you, when the the loan officer came to my place of business to have the document signed, I joked with him when he said, "I can't believe they approved you without a personal guarantee." And I jokingly said, "What are they going to come down and break my legs?" <laughs> and, and he kind of paused and said, "They might." <laughs> what type of institution is this? <laughs> But yeah, that was, that was one time I can recall, at least one time I can document, I did not have to do a personal guarantee. It was an equipment loan. So yeah. in a sense, it was collateral, collateral based. Mm-hmm. So if I defaulted, they could repossess it, resell it, and try to make the loan whole again. Big but, difference. Big huge difference. difference. So on this right. one, I, I you know, and I'm going to minimize this, and I don't want people to take this as, that it is a small thing. But at the end of the day, if you're late and you don't do what you say you're going to do, they're going to send you a piece of paper. Yep. You know, send you a piece of paper, and and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying that it's not a bad piece of paper, but at the, in America, it's like, man, what, they, what are they really going to do other than try to, you know, come after you with that? Correct, John. Chris, John wants to know: Is there a monthly fee if you don't carry a balance? Not on any of the, so the four lines that I was approved for on my first and second round, there is no monthly fee. No, no monthly fee. John, you got that one. Yep. How about, uh, oh, Laura, 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 well, would you use this for a down payment then refinance? We just talked talked yep. about that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. It's a good one right there. Yeah. Uh, does your can Candace? Hey, Candace. Oh, nice picture. Does your credit score need to be in the 700s? So it's not a requirement, but from my experience with Fund and Grow and listening to the COO and others from Fund and Grow, they know where these credit bureaus want you to be to get the maximum allowable financing for the first round, Mm -hmm. right? So from my experience, from what I've heard, they would like you to be around a 720. That does not mean you won't get approved at a 680. Mm -hmm. You will get approved at a 680 at a much, a smaller line of credit initially, and then Fund and Grow can help you build your credit over that next you know, period, whatever it might be, to get you in the range to get the balance increase. Yeah, they've right. got all type of secrets, Chris. I mean, yeah. They actually, secret. they have a, a, a referral that they, they offer through their emails. They have a firm that strictly focuses on writing letters to the credit bureaus to get certain things removed that are not reported correctly 
and like it's like 150 bucks and they take your whole bureau your whole credit bureau report go through all the things you know line by line and send letters send letters send you don't do anything i haven't done it yet because my credit's pretty decent but they offer that service for someone who's below the criteria for maximum funding that's deep. Do they offer that service like you mean I've, yeah. I, when, I, when I was even talking to Mike, he, they have relationships with other lenders that will pay off some of your bad debt, restructure it, and yeah. move it over to some, I mean, just to kind of boost your, they have so many tricks that I had never even thought of mm -hmm. to help you with your credit score. And you don't even, I know, Chris, your L L LLC was seasoned, but mm -hmm. Mike was telling me that you don't, you don't necessarily have to have an older LLC. You don't. I think... If you if you want it to be a business line of credit, you do have to be structured of some sort of entity, mm -hmm. right? But the line of credit, the the rate and the and the amount is based on your FICO score. It's mm -hmm. not going to post to your personal credit, but it's based on the fact that you know how to manage debt and yeah. pay debt. That's what it's based on. Yeah, and um, what is it? So. The, the relationships is what you're buying into. Mm -hmm. You know how to manage debt. Another thing you mentioned to me slipped my mind. Let me see. Uh, Janiel wants to know, was the 105,000 credit line, Chris, from one bank or multiple banks? No. It, yeah. It, so it's four banks. So I'm, I'm in the second round of funding at 105. But... Uh, we're attempting now to go through the third round. So it's only four banks. American Express was 50. Uh, Chase was 25. Bank of America was 20. And Fulton was 20. So that was that. that's where we got the whole 105 from. So it's four different lines. And I've said, I've, I've only used about 30 of it. And that's only on the American Express one. I still have Fulton, Chase, and Bank of America. I haven't touched those yet. Nice. That's cool. Yep. Yep. So round up uh, the availability of cash, the availability of capital. You don't necessarily have to have a bunch of it sitting around. And I urge you not to, actually, because it's yeah. losing value every day, especially yeah. with it. I remember Chris called me up. You, you told me a quote. Yeah. Why would I go try to earn money when they are printing it? Correct. Printing this money for us to use, y'all. So if you go to the link in the video description and see how much you qualify for it. John wants to know King. John King, hey, is bankruptcy going to be a hard stop? Do you know Chris isn't an employee? He just got to. Got yeah, to I on. don't. I don't know. I, I guess it would also depend on how long that bankruptcy had been on there. So when I mentioned that funding grow, even when you put in the application, so you're not paying. You're not paying when you put the application in. You're paying when when you actually want to go forward with funding to get approved for funding. You can contact Fund and Grow and schedule a consultation with them and explain to them, this is my scenario. I have a bankruptcy. It's eight years old. Oh, okay. They might recommend removing that or showing you the process to get that removed or referring you correctly to where you can go to get that removed to mm -hmm. then apply with them. So, I mean, they, they were very transparent. I did not pay on my initial application. I didn't pay on day one because I wanted to find out if I if I only get X amount of dollars, why am I spending right. this much? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, they were very transparent with, with communication without yeah, that. Um, what I'm hearing, Mike told me that they don't take your money if they know they can't help you. They, want, they, they take your app. Go ahead. They will take your application. It might process the initial payment. So like, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, you, you can choose to either um, let them, deduct their fee from whatever you're approved for, or you can agree to three installment payments to pay their fee, right? But they're not going to charge you that fee if they can't get you approved. If you put in an app and you're 620 FICO with a bankruptcy and two liens against you, they're not going to take your money because they can't help you. Yeah. 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 He told me, he mentioned that too. Yeah. Uh, good question, John. Um, okay, your credit score is over six eighty. Good for you. Yep. Uh, Janielle, uh, you have an L you you have had an LLC for a month. Would you recommend using Fund and Grow now or wait three to six months? I would say it is truly based on your knowledge of where your personal FICO, your personal credit score is, because that would the that is what these bureaus are going to base your lines of credit 
on, not the longevity or the structure of your business. So yeah, it's a month old. It's an entity in whatever state doesn't matter. They're going to base your initial first round based on your personal credit score. Personal. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. the personal credit score mm -hmm. is, is paramount, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect order. it. They just want to know that you, Chris Haskins or me, Chris Birch, do you pay your bills? Do you not owe this car, whatever, you know, loan? Do you not have two months in arrears right. on your personal mortgage? Yeah, they right. just want to know, are you managing your money? Do you not have, and I had a couple, I didn't have any negatives, but I had a multiple amount of inquiries because I had done some transactions about two years ago. And they said that the inquiries, they'll help me remove. But fortunately, because the credit score was high enough, it wasn't going to be a determining factor on whether these institutions went for the approval. Good, good. Yeah. So Roundup, I don't want to keep you all night tonight. Um, I have negotiated. Roundup has negotiated a discount for you. It's going to be uh, on your fee. They have like this fee that they charge for the whole year, right? So it's yeah. not like a monthly fee. Yeah. And Chris has used our link here. I'm hearing good things. I know I know Mike and at Fund and Grove, they've done over two million with my with the Roundup people so far, my family. And just find out how much you how much you qualify. I know this works. I'm see, we're hanging out with Chris and doing deals with him. So Chris, anything you would like to just kind of point in the direction for any of my Roundup family that looking to get some financing? I would I would say if you're hesitant Try the application, see what Fund and Grow comes back with. Worst case scenario, you're going to be approved for way more than you thought. So, yeah, I've been in business a long time, but to to get this sheer volume of funding within a 30 day window that was just based on me being diligent on my personal credit. So I'm, I'm like probably a lot of the folks that are watching this. In my 20s, my credit was not that good because I didn't understand it. I was never taught that. I had to learn it. But over the years, I've learned how to manage it. I understand you know, now what they're looking for. Yeah. So you know, even if you only get like the minimal amount of funding, it's more than you had yesterday. So why, <laughs> not, why not use it, build on it, you know, continue, continue building on it? Because they're going to get you on a second round, a third round as you as they help you either improve your credit or you know they have they actually have some courses they they email out as well on how to manage debt how to manage money nice yeah i know i i have a couple other um associates that did not even have an llc chris mm -hmm. and i know mike was able to they have a company that they work with to help them set up an llc right. to go in if your credits you know, I don't work for them, so I know that they can help sure. you. If, if you don't have one, a lot of my viewers may not even have an LLC set yeah, up. Yeah, I've, I've heard that too. But, you know, when I put in the app and they saw that, you know, the the company's been, you know, up and running and they, they didn't question it as long as there were no outstanding debts to the company and no, you know, dings on my personal credit. They didn't, they didn't yeah. get a problem at all. Okay, Roundup, I just, I wanted to share with you. I'm just transparent. Get down to the link in the video description if you want to see what you qualify for. Yep. We're negotiated that discount for you and just fill out the information. Then Michael, somebody, one of his reps from Fund and Grow will reach out to you to see what you qualify for. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, three o'clock, I got my boy Mike Wolf. He's got a real estate seminar coming up in about a week or so. So y'all look out for that email. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell, y'all. Share with anybody else that needs financing for their real estate or any business. Because Chris, you're using it for both, or you can use it for whatever. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, your your listeners just said, you know, would you use this as you know a deposit or down payment? Yeah. Why down not? payment. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I wish this stuff was around when I came up. I, I, you know what, man? My hardest part coming up for me was getting the down payment for the hard money guys. But we didn't have that. So Putting that putting that together with hard money could is open up so many doors for you. Sure, sure. All right, round up. I'll see you tomorrow, three o'clock. Talk to you soon. Peace. See you.